Welcome everybody to Scrub Sessions. This is our first ever Scrub Session. And the whole idea behind Scrub Sessions is to reach out and connect with as many people as we can across the world, around the corner, and bring to you some beautiful discussions about music, about well-being, and really share the joy of music with you through these really, really tough times. I'm Dr. Emma O'Brien. I'm the head of Scrub Choir, and it's my privilege to be hosting Scrub Sessions. Sadako Pointer, what a thrill. You're our first guest on Scrub Sessions. Yay! And it's, yay! it's <laughs> cheering. And it's amazing because we, you know, I know that everyone's kind of got a bit of Zoom fatigue, but how beautiful that we can connect this way in Zoom yeah. across yeah. the world. You know, I love it. I don't, and it's been so long now, like I figured out where and how. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A year ago, I would have been struggling. It would have taken yeah, about 30 um, minutes. <laughs> I love the plant. You've got that oh, happening thanks, in the background. Thanks. It's very nice. And you can see, so I'm actually at the Royal Melbourne Hospital Music Therapy Studio. We've got a little wow. tiny in-house recording studio because music's so big here, so a big part yeah. of our patients' lives. And writing songs is a big thing yeah. that we do. So we bring them down here and they record their songs. And I fought really hard. The patients? It. So it's a real privilege. Yeah, the patients, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, we write original songs with them. So that's how we've got this space that you wouldn't normally expect to find at a hospital. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. I mean, you, you learn about like dogs in hospitals and working with patients, but I'd never yeah. imagine a music studio in the hospital. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So it's all about yeah. quality of life and connecting. So yeah. welcome to Scrub Sessions. Thank and you. And tell us a little bit about you. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, I've uh -huh. read a little bit, but, you know, tell me a bit about yourself. Well, <laughs> you know where to begin. <laughs> um, I currently sing with my grandmother and my great aunt, the Pointer Gorgeous. Sisters. Yeah. Um, actually, now it's my aunt and my grandmother. Um, my great aunt has taken a leave of absence to kind of deal with the wardrobe and stuff and do the museum and stuff like mm. that. So... Um, things are changing and I'm breaking out trying to do some solo stuff and trying to figure out who Sadako is on her own outside of the Pointer yeah. Sisters, make them proud, you know, start to make a name for myself. But yeah. What, a, what an incredible heritage you have. You know, yeah. I think that's amazing and, and how glorious to sing with your family. I, I sing with my daughter. Um, that's we're pretty not, much. We're, we're the O'Brien sisters. No, <laughs> yeah, we're not, I love it. not yet, but you know, right. we'll give it a go. And, and, you know, what's it like going on stage and, and doing that? I mean, the point of sisters, I mean, they're iconic and yeah. then you're part of that. What does that, what does that feel like? Well, now I've gotten a little used to it. Um, I think what, 11 years in, but at first I had to remember, stop looking at them and look at the <laughs> audience. Cause I'd be like, yo, I love this part. Like I'm watching the show too. Oh, this is great. Yeah. And my grandma's like, turn, turn around. And I'm just like, oh, oh, oh yes, the audience. Because I'm also a fan, you know? And yeah. I grew up watching them perform like everyone else. And my aunt June, who's now passed away, would come and pull me out on stage. And, mm -hmm. and I thought I was a Pointer Sister then. So yeah. when I became one now, I was just like, yeah, this, this works. Yeah, This is my how, job. How beautiful yeah. and, and how gorgeous and of course you know the sound because of the mm. the relationships and the connections you know you you always sing as one voice don't you it's yeah quite but in three-part harmony <laughs> <laughs> right and yeah, not and even right. with the band when the band comes in it's a whole new thing because sometimes yeah. we'll do track shows and the fun's there with the ladies but when the band comes my grandmother transforms and it's wow. so interesting to see and from that her daughter and I we follow her lead you know so yeah. like it is just everybody working together and it just creates this vibe and when the mm. audience picks up on it it's electric I think it's, I mean what, it's intense it sounds stunning and I think what you're talking about there too is about the vibe and connection and mm -hmm. I think you know let's face it COVID has tried so hard to to rip all our connections away yeah. hasn't it it really the, has have you been able to perform at all or what's been happening? How have you kept your spirits no. up? 
No, mm. I mean, in the, I've done a lot more studio work <laughs> thanks to my new manager, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot more studio work than ever before. Yeah. So I will say I've got to perform, but in a different way, you know, because mm. studio is very different from touring. And I yeah. think I've got touring under my belt now. And now that I'm venturing off into solo stuff during COVID studio work, which is a whole different ballpark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another way of being isolated. <laughs> <laughs> but do you still feel that, um, I mean, I, I sing a little bit in the studio for the stuff that we do. Do you still yeah. feel very much that you're sort of almost imagining the audiences there? Is that is that how you do it? Or how do you feel when you're in there? When I'm in the studio, you know what? That's so strange. I don't think of the audience at all. I think of my mentors and how I've watched them. And when I saw them in the studio or even people portraying my mentors, like what's love got to do with it, you know, with Tina Turner, I would imagine how she sang it in some of the documentaries or in the movie, like yeah. she would fight for that feeling that you get naturally on stage. You have to tap into it. You have to tap into pain if it's a hard song, joy. So not so much the audience as much as bring it, you know, like yeah. think of anything you ever saw that made you hype and just want to like get up and move. And that's yeah, that emotion, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. You, be, you probably do what I do. I fly my hands around a lot more and do all that. In the oh studio. my God. Like, I have to go stop making so much movement. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin's like, you're going to hit the mic. Calm down. I'm like doing jumping jack. And, and how have you kept well and happy at this time? I mean, you're jumping jacks in the studio, but how have you, have, what's it been like for you? It's been tough for everyone, but what's it been like for you? It's been tough for me as well. Um, mental, mental health. You know, it, I've just been trying to stay positive because life as I knew it, life as everyone knew it, changed so drastically. And I thought I was better equipped at handling such shifts and this one was completely taboo to me and I just trying to focus on my mental health oddly enough through food I just keep going okay. eat the rainbow eat the oh, rainbow yeah. because I, I was noticing I was starting to just you know the depression eat instead yeah, yeah. of eating the rainbow to stay happy because it genuinely does make me happy to see those colors to be interactive with the food and all that so I'm just trying mm. to work on my mental health through what I eat that's yeah. my whole thing during this pandemic. And, yeah. and as a musician, I mean, people often ask me this question too. They go, well, do you still use music for your mental health and well-being? I, I know I do. Do you have yeah. certain ways that you use it? I mean, when we're performing or in therapy, you know, we're, we're doing with people, but sometimes we need some things for ourselves. You got any little tips for that? that Absolutely. Get an Alexa and play your favorite playlist as loud as as possible and sing until every note is wrong and you are just belting it <laughs> and having the time of your life and you end up in tears and it's the best therapy session ever in the mirror <laughs> beautiful beautiful it helps oh. me to remember yeah, I, you know why we smile you would have had some pretty um full-on times touring you must have had mm -hmm. to develop some special skills there um, mm -hmm. Do you think you've, you've pulled on those a little bit at this time or were they um, later on now, now I've tapped into them before I was just having fun. I was just like, yeah. I'm a pointer sister. I'm in a different country <laughs> every other month and just having a blast. But now I'm like, oh, that's why my grandma goes to sleep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's why she doesn't drink. It's like, okay, I get it now. I'm at work, mm. you know, so yeah. I've stopped partying <laughs> after the show. If there's another show, you know, I just kind of listen and take note to what my grandma is doing. And if, yeah. and if I'm like too, too fast, too busy, that means I'm headed the wrong way. Like yeah. I look at her and she's calm and she's like, I'm just going to go be still for a minute. And I'm like, but well, we've never been here. What are we going to do? And she's like, we're going to sleep. <laughs> I'm just like, like oh okay that's how you do that okay yeah at 74 I get it I'm gonna try that what a what a beautiful beautiful mentor you I mean you're surrounded by mentors you are so Man. so lucky and, and must be yeah. something that you really cherish and you talked a little bit about when you're in the studio and you 
you can remember like what those mentors did in the studio mm-hmm. is a little tricky question and mm-hmm. I don't even know if I could answer this question <laughs> I'm going to turn it around on you oh yeah Ooh. what's your <laughs> what's your earliest music memory The church. Yeah. Beautiful. Wanting to be in the choir. Oh. Beautiful. And being so afraid because they were always being called out. Like in the Baptist church, the choir is just everything. Yeah. You know, you can't be off. So oh, okay. the choir director will um fifth fifth in the back row. Oh really? <laughs> like, and I'm I was I was so intimidated by that you know, and they fixed wow. it and they got it together because they were amazing singers. And because yeah. of that criticism that taught them, but that was my earliest memory of music. Like, whoa, singing whoa. joke. <laughs> yeah. That's like a yeah. working memory. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Did you, did but it's, you have followed like, the same in the family, like the yeah. sisters and the cousins, they correct you. You're off. And that's my part. I mean, down to age four, that's my part stop singing (laughs) so so it's always like that you know I find myself doing it to my son I'm like that's my that's my part you're doing it with love though surely right of course I'm like let me sing my part he's like mama I'm better and I'm like okay fine how old's your son five oh bless yeah that's so gorgeous and they grow up quick I tell you my daughter's a little older than five now um (laughs) They do go. I was just thinking what my early music memory, it's a bit more obscure than that. I just remember hanging, washing on the line with my mum, singing, oh. rain, rain, go away, oh. come back in another day. That's my earliest one. I love I don't even, it. Yeah, I must have been teeny tiny, weeny whiny. Yeah. So, That's a classic though. I still yeah. think it works. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I know, if only we could sing a song for COVID, hey? Right. Oh, oh Lord. What would that sound oh, no. like? <laughs> that's what we should be working on that's the one the magic the magic song the magic song that's what we're missing I don't know I think your song pretty comes pretty close to the magic song it's gorgeous to hear happiness come out yeah. again I I mean how exciting tell me a bit about you know redoing that song and putting Sadako on that like how does that feel I can't take the credit I um well, we in the point with the with the show that we have at the uh, as the Pointer Sisters, we open up with that song, so it's so powerful. Oh, and when beautiful. I started working with Marcus and through some of the people he knew, it came to him like, "Hey, I need a singer," and he's like, "I I have the perfect one. What song?" And oh, yeah. even better. <laughs> and it's like, okay, it kind of showed how the stars were aligned. You know, it's like this is super meant to be. Again, I'm just really overwhelmed by the that sort of beautiful heritage you have and all that yeah. love that's coming through your music through the yeah. family sure don't sing their part but, <laughs> but you know that that whole it's just gorgeous and yeah. you must feel quite blessed do you, do I, you do. Feel that, yeah. I feel blessed and I won't I won't lie and a lot of pressure because yeah when you think that this group this iconic group that you love and the world loves you're going to be compared to them a lot and it's going to yeah. be really important for me to go, I'm not taking any of that away. And I'm not trying to change anything. I just want to show you what else they can produce, you know, like their granddaughter. Yeah. Like I came from that, but I'm also me, you know, and I hope you enjoy my relay of love and self-power to the world, as well as you did the Pointer Sisters. That's my only hope. Yeah. That's it. Well, you know, I mean, I, I've only met you over Zoom, but you are definitely you. Like this, no, I, I know we're all, we all, you know, we all come from things and we all have yeah. connections, but, but there's this beautiful sense of who you are. And, mm-hmm. and I think that people, people will hear that, you know, they can hear that when you sing, they mm-hmm. can hear it when you talk. And it's, it, and as you're saying, it's such an exciting time for you too, to sort of take that step. Yeah. And, you know, and a, a brave step too, you know, Absolutely. and I think part of, maybe that's part of what we've all been going through. Like, you know, how can I be brave? What can Mm -hmm. I do that's going to be a little bit different? Yeah. I read a saying not too long ago that really brought, it's so simple, but it touches on that. And it goes, what if I fall? Dot, dot, dot. But oh, sweetheart, what if you fly? And I'm just like, yeah, I feel like that's what everyone needs to hear right now. You know, Mm -hmm. as we go back to whatever that is. Yes. What if you fly? 
you know, don't, don't give up hope or trying, you know? So beautiful. Hmm. Almost, there's nothing more to say after that. I was, gonna ask you, I was actually going to ask you if you've ever been to Australia. <laughs> been I before. have and I love it. <laughs> It's just amazing to talk to you all the way over here. I feel like we've, we've become friends in this time. And yes. uh, I'm so excited to hear the song and it's just very, very exciting. Is there any little last message you'd like to give to everyone? As you know, we're going to put these scrub sessions out first to the staff and the patients, and then we're going to make podcasts so everyone can share with what we're trying to do here, yeah. which is connect and connected uh-huh. music is there a little mm-hmm. you know a bit of a one-liner before we sign up with your song i can't wait till i'm there to record with them as well that's what i'll Done. say hello to all the patients and the royal melbourne hospital staff and hello to melbourne this is our first scrub session and this is so exciting because we've had a chat with sadaka pointer she's been so generous and also kind of a little bit of a dream come true for me I get to sing with her it's so exciting and John's playing music therapy we're all in here and we're all bringing a lot of music and love and happiness to you so let's take it away happiness you're full of sweet surprises happiness you feel my heart desire more more Give me 